This show is supported by you via Patreon. Stick around to the ad break to hear more and perhaps join as a member. This is Kappa Go for March 29, 2024. Keep up to date with the important happenings in the Go community in about 15 minutes per week. I'm Shai Nechmad and I approve this message. I need to somehow re-record it for every single date, just in one Ooh, sitting, to go. stop saying that. And who are you? I'm Jonathan Hall. And you don't approve this message. That's what um, you're saying. I don't disapprove it. Um, how are you, Jonathan? I'm okay. How are you? I am tired because daylight saving time. Yeah. We talked about time two weeks ago, right? Because of the proposal for Unix time. And then we oh. talked about it last week because of my proposal for, you know, like pretty string formatting that got rejected. And I want to talk about time today again. Why in God's name do we still have daylight saving time? Programmers talk a lot about DST bugs. They're saying it wrong. DST is the bug. We had an uh, the recording lineup for 10 a.m. my time today, but Israel just moved to daylight saving time overnight. So A, I'm tired. B, we delayed it in one hour and my whole schedule got messed up. And I just bet, like, if the, uh, I don't know, the Shadow Council lizard people of the world are somehow listening to our show, please cancel daylight saving time. <laughs> please. And bring back Elvis. <laughs> All right, let's talk about the Go proposals. Let's talk about something we talked about before. Let's talk about something we talked about before. Let's talk about something <laughs> we talked about before. <laughs> nice. So uh, we talked a few weeks ago about slices.repeat proposal. Uh, it has been accepted and then re-accepted. Which is just perfect for an issue about repeat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, basically, they accepted the proposal to add a function called repeat that takes uh, a type parameter of any and then uh, a slice of that as an argument and a count to repeat that so many times. After they implemented it, Ian Lance Taylor comes back and says, sorry for not noticing this before, but every single uh, function in our slices package has a different type parameter. It takes two type parameters. We should match that. So they re-implemented it, or, or will be re-implementing it at least, to match the same type parameter parameters as all the other functions in that package. So not really a huge news update, but it's, it's just worth repeating. It's, it's worth repeating. <laughs> I'm wondering how, like, throughout such an intensive proposal process, you can miss something like that. It is funny. Like there was a lot of bike shedding. That's what was the what we talked about last time, right? There's a lot of mm -hmm. bike shedding on here. It's like, what color should the bike shed be? Let's talk about this for three weeks. Okay, we final settle on green. Oh, wait a minute. All the other bike sheds are blue. Let's go back to blue. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Actually, all all our employees come in by car anyway. So <laughs> <laughs> this is a bit of a tangent. I went on a that's it's so unrelated. We might even cut it out. But I went to a meetup uh, this week. Uh -huh. And the meetup was uh, at Wix's new campuses in Israel, which is okay. a huge building. And I got to the first bike shed, literally put my bike there because I, I rode my bicycle to the meetup. Got in. No, this is the wrong entrance. And I was like, okay, can I take my bike somewhere else? And she's like, yeah, there, there's a bike shed there as well. So I'm like, all right, I have to untie the bike. And, you know, it's already the meetup is starting and my entire team is <laughs> I'm riding. Then I'm putting my bike in the thing. And then the guard starts arguing with me about going into the uh, can I tie it here? Can I not tie it here? Can I tie it to the bench instead? I want to tie it up. I don't want people st to steal it. So I was actually bike shedding for a while. And then the <laughs> meetup started. Uh, VP R&D of Wix, like uh, VP Engineering of Wix, like start selling about their new platform and how they wanted people to stop bike shedding. And all I can think about is my last 15 minutes arguing people Oh, can I put my bike here? Can I go through here, please? Nice. <laughs> bike shedding about bike shedding. If you like literal bike shedding, Amsterdam is the city for you, by the way. <laughs> totally. So we have another proposal we want to talk about uh, that got accepted. And it's actually in the implementation phases right now. I think it's a good time to jump in. One of the things I really like about Go is how much of the tooling is built in, right? Mm -hmm. You don't have to worry, for example, about formatting. There, there's no bike shedding about formatting, for example, in Go. And one of the good tools for that is go vet right built into the language sort of a best practices linter i would say right so for now you know vet has a bunch of checks and there's always this tension what other checks should we add to vet and this proposal that got accepted will add reporting of two new standard library symbols in your code which is super interesting 
Like if you use a thing that is too new for the uh, Go version that your model is in, for example, let's say range over int, right? You try to use range over int, but your model is Go 120 because you mm-hmm. have to stay compatible to Go 120. Go vet will report it for you, uh, which is a lot easier, faster, and, and, and a much better developer experience than finding that out like in compilation or even in like linking or in runtime or whatever, like later. So it's all about finding these things earlier. Like you evaluate the build constraints in, you know, in the Go files and in, in the Go mod file. And by looking at those build constraints, you find uh, things that you're trying to use in Go that are too new. This got accepted about two weeks ago. And the issue now tracks uh, the implementation. And you can jump to the, you know, different change, like pull requests. I don't know how they're called in Garrett. Do you, do you have any idea? They're called uh, CL change, change list, maybe? Is that what it yeah. is? Anyway, the weird interface that uh, Go uh, uses, I just use GitHub for so long. So there's a few issues where you can, a few change lists where you can take a look at people sort of starting to implement that and, and mentioning this issue, which is interesting. Uh, and I think there are a few other places people might want help. And this is a really easy thing to pick up, I think, right? Just look at some stuff and, and try to implement this uh, better. So if you've been itching for an opportunity to get your hands dirty in the Go open source code, I think this is a really friendly, easy and, you know, with some people we know, like uh, Daniel Marti and some other people who are, you know, pretty good contributors like uh, Jay Conrad and people who have been around. Brian Mills, which we talked about last week. So that proposal got accepted right now in implementation. Mm-hmm. Hopefully GoVet will report this stuff for you soon. If your entire code base is the same version, I don't see it being an issue, right? It's mostly if you're like maintaining multiple modules in multiple versions. It's going to mostly be an issue for libraries probably. And, and one of the comments in the issue from three weeks ago, does a, a short audit of some popular uh, libraries where the, the Go mod is declared as one version, but then they pull in features from the center library from a much later version. So, you know, for example, you may recall that io.readall was added in Go 116, which replaced ioutil.readall, which had been around forever. And so there's one particular library that has a Go mod set to Go 1.12, so it claims to be buildable on Go 1.12, but it uses io.readall, which means it will actually fail to compile between Go 1.12 through 1.15. So this would, would catch that sort of thing. Cool. So if you have a library, I guess it would be useful. Again, what I'm imagining is that in a big enough corporation, like internal source code, you would start having uh, different Go versions. But that only applies when you're like hundreds of developers. If you're below 100 people, you're probably all on the same Go version just because it's so easier. Uh, cool. Uh, let's talk about context. This is a really good blog post I want to I wanna hear about. Uh, so we all know context. We all love context. Context is great. Um, Just a bag of things. You should put everything in, right? Exactly. That's exactly what it's for. It, it allows you to bypass type safety and compile time checks and all those nasty things that get in the way when you're trying to be productive as a developer. There's no way for you to see our faces. So I'll just <laughs> out loud say like slash sarcasm rant. <laughs> this is not the official position of the podcast. Don't no. put everything in a context. In fact, uh, I try to avoid using context for values. I use it. I try to use it exclusively for cancellation signals, but there are times when I use it for values. And that's what this blog post is about. Basically points out a couple of uh, potential sort of foot guns with context, specifically because when you call context with value, for example, it wraps the existing context and returns a new one that wraps the old one. If you do this in a for loop and you don't declare a new context every time, uh, you end up just adding new values over and over again to the same context. <laughs> or you're wrapping it, rewrapping it, rewrapping it, rewrapping it, which can use a lot of memory and, and be s- s- silly slow and so on. Why is that the official behavior, do you think? Why does it wrap rather than like modify? Yeah. Is that the question? Uh, oh, because for immutability Immutability, reasons? yeah, yeah. It is useful when you're not using a for loop. It's really nice to be able to have one context that you could like call six go routines and pass the same context to the six go routines, and those six go routines could each add their own thing to the context depending on what's going on in their own like copy. And you're not yeah. worried about like concurrency issues. Between exactly. Them. Exactly. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So if you use a lot of context, in particular with value, have a quick look at this blog post. Um, really well written. Yeah. It's gap it's, notes. Shout out to you. It's real short. Uh, and it might save you some memory leaks or other problems. Yeah, Gabriel, Go and Python software developer at OVH Cloud from France. Really cool blog. I really like these sort of very minimal, high value, and you know, been going on for a while blog posts. He started it in 2020, 
dude, keep it up. You have a lot mm-hmm. of great content. We love it. Cool. One thing you said, uh, you know, multiple Go routines. Didn't you mean uh, multiple threads? Yeah, no. Well, we don't. We don't believe in threads and Go. <laughs> in any context. <laughs> in any context, that's nice. <laughs> um, so uh, this is a really news about the Go community, not about Go. And it's yeah. not really news. It's just a bit of drama that uh, I found funny. So over on the Go for Slack, uh, if you haven't joined, we recommend it, especially our little community hashtag cup of Go, cup dash O dash Go. So there's this quote from um, Douglas Adams, right? In the beginning, Bill Kennedy offered to reuse threads. This has made a lot of people very angry and was widely regarded as a bad move. Uh, so it's just amazing how much people care about this stuff, I guess. Like, yeah. use threads, don't use threads, who cares? The discussion over on the Slack channel is very lively. And it's been all over from, if we don't use threads, I'm not going to use the Slack anymore, to... Let's get all the languages together and do a migration to Zulip and everybody will have to move. And uh, if you have an opinion about that, if you really like or really dislike uh, how we're doing uh, threads in our Slack channel, you can join. There's an open discussion. It's threads discussion. And we'll put the link in the show notes. One alternative, if you really don't like the way threads are or aren't handled on the Gopher Slack, you can switch over to using godev.com. (laughs) <laughs> godev.com is a new website that just was announced a few weeks ago it is essentially stack overflow but just for go godev.com the interesting thing about this website is it is powered by apache answer which is written in go we talked about that project a few weeks ago so they uh they handle threading in an entirely different way so you don't have to worry about that whole debate yeah <laughs> so it's funny apache answer is written mostly in go and now you have godev.com which is Stack Overflow just for Go. I don't know who will use that. I'm exclusively asking either uh, the official documentation if I really care about something, or you know, GitHub CLI, like GitHub uh, Copilot chat directly in my ID. Basically, I'm only going to Google to search for answers or Stack Overflow when I'm stuck, like when these two options don't work. But you gotta have these answers somewhere to like keep the language alive. One really cool thing about this uh, is that it has the Go playground built in so you can put go snippets and you can execute them in your browser which is something stack overflow has i think for a few languages like javascript maybe uh, but they don't have that for go so that that's one benefit to using this is you can execute your code examples in your browser i'm not sure that that's enough to overcome the the critical mass problem but it is a nice feature there's questions here that wouldn't live on uh, stack overflow as well for example yeah. continuous profiling question mark asked by uh, levi lewis Beyond pre-prof, what tools are you using to profile production workloads? Now, I've been working on this uh, in Orca, like as part of my work, super heavily. We're, we're really into introducing Pyroscope and continuous profiling right now. Of course, because most of our code is Python and Python sucks and is very slow. And uh, this is a thread that, you know, if you asked uh, on Stack Overflow, you would get absolutely shredded, oh, yeah. right? Because... The, all the Stack Overflow mods would be like, what are you doing? This is not a specific question. This is not a place for recommendation, blah, blah, blah. And here it seems a lot more calm and open. So I guess it's it's a good alternative for slightly more open-ended discussions. Definitely. About Go. One, of, one of the high, highest voted questions is, how do I get started learning Go? And I know I've seen that question closed and slammed shut about 15 times a day on Stack Overflow. So it's if that's the kind of question you want to ask and answer, this is going to be a good place to go. Yeah, 100%. Uh, and there are a few options here that, you know, the official Go tour... Uh, which we always recommend, and Ardan Labs is here, and you know, 100% recommended from me as well, at least. So it's interesting. All right, there's another story I want to talk about, but I'm not sure if it's a story or a news item. How would you categorize that? Ranting. All right. <laughs> I guess we need to open like a few categories, but how would we yeah. keep them in line? When I say ranting, maybe yeah. you say rant. We should probably yeah. map each one to a number. A number or some sort of constant string. There was a package yeah. that would help with this. Maybe an enumeration. But I've just read that Go enums still suck. Yeah, I read that too. Yeah, so there's this blog post uh, that really, really, really made the rounds. Mostly, I think, because it's a uh, flame baity, but also because it's interesting. There's an original, the original post is called Go enums suck, uh, which, you know, I can get behind. Like the IOTA thing, I don't like it. It's not very useful. Every code generator I've seen, absolutely, it just moves to consts and then does mm-hmm. the map in the map. For example, when you compile protobuf, 
It doesn't do the IOTA thing. It does the let's do constant string mm-hmm. thing. And then the blog post goes into, you know, why it's bad and how to do it. And then, it, you know, they wrote a tool called uh, Go Inums, which is fun. I wouldn't use it because if I got to that point, I would use OpenAPI or Protobuf or something that's like super compatible. And this is a follow-up blog post. So like behind the flashy colors and the uh, very uh, rage baity titles and whatever, I think this is very useful context and uh, like super interesting, you know, dive yeah. into this, into the fact that the original option for doing it with IOTA is just weird. But you didn't like it so much. So I, I didn't like the original one that much either. I, I feel like it's kind of, there's nothing new being said here. Although I do appreciate the second one probably more than the first. Because my, my TLDR of this is go eating them still suck, but there's better solutions than what I came up with. That's sort of my TLDR. Because the original one had his own, the author had written a library to, to sort of help work around some of these problems. I felt like the library wasn't ideal. And now the author agrees and has some new suggestions. But um, I feel like in general, I agree, go eating them suck. Go enums don't really exist, so yeah, they suck. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like trying to come up with a general solution that isn't built into the language is just never going to be the right solution. In some cases, there are useful alternatives, but you don't need a, f- a full general purpose solution in most cases, which is what this author is trying to come up with. I think there are just like competing requirements, right? I yeah, want exactly. it to be backward compatible, for example, but I also want to be able to extend it. So yeah. either... You know, you go with, okay, I assign a number and I can never reuse that number, which IOTA doesn't promise, right? Because you can put a value in the middle. All right, so I use string values, but something has to guarantee that some someplace else, I know this, these string values, so I have to extract them to somewhere readable. I want forward compatibility. So what happens if I add a try to use a value that doesn't exist? Okay, so let's use zero for unknown. And this is an example of even when you use a super strict uh, schema language like Protobuf, which I love, putting zero as unknown is a lint uh, issue. It's not enforced into the protocol. Right. So I totally agree. Like you need to define what are your requirements from enums and then find the best solution. It is a problem, though, that when you look up how to do go enum before you figure out, oh, I need this specific type of extendable uh, with extra properties, string represented, but not backward compatible. Like, you know, this matrix of things, the thing that pops up is IOTA, which is almost 100% not what you want. Yeah, it's, it's almost irrelevant to, to the question. <laughs> almost. Uh, cool. Well, that's what we have for y'all uh, this week. We don't have an interview, so stick around for the ad break if you are really appreciative, but we don't promise anything after that. See you next week. Bye. <laughs> Shai had to run quickly because of the time change. So I'm here alone for this short ad break. Thanks for listening. If this is your first time listening to the show, thanks for joining us. Would you do us a favor and share it with your friends and colleagues? Uh, share it on your work Slack, share it on your, on your work teams, wherever, uh, with your with your colleagues, your other gophers in your life. We're really excited to see this show growing in popularity and uh, we can't do it without you. Uh, if you are interested in helping support the show financially, we'd love to have you as a member on Patreon. You can go to cupago.dev. There you can find links to Patreon and all of our episodes and buy some swag. That also helps to support the show. Uh, We're not making money off of this. Uh, We're just doing this as a hobby. Uh, But there are costs involved uh, for editing, for hosting, etc. So we're looking for some financial help from the community if that sounds like something you'd like to do. And if not, of course, keep listening anyway. It is a free show after all. I also want to mention our growing community on Slack. We have a channel on the Gopher Slack, Cup O'Go, that's Kebab Case. Uh, we have people joining virtually every week. We're at almost 350 people. Uh, we'll probably hit the 350 mark this week if th- the trend continues. Just this last week, for example, we had someone, uh, Paul Buteau, I hope I say that right, joined. He said, hello, great show. I thought I would join here too, as the Gopher Slack has mentioned so often. So apparently a long-time listener, first-time caller, if you will. Uh, also says he's not really an experienced gopher. Great. We love to have inexperienced gophers. We love to have new people. Uh, the truth is there's always somebody more experienced than you. I mean, I'm, I'm an experienced gopher in certain areas and completely inexperienced in others, as are we all. So there's room for everybody in uh, in the channel over there. We talk about all sorts of stuff, not just the show and not just the news. Come join us. Be sure to leave a rating, a uh, review if you would, if you haven't done that already, wherever you listen to your podcast. That does help get the word out to the public about the show. Uh, I think that's about all I have to ramble at you about for now. I'm sure I forgot something. When Shai is back to help with this next week, we'll cover all of it. 
Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next week. 